Shalom, peace, and blessings. Welcome to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Crystal. Today I will be giving a devotional reading on God loves will never let me go. Locked into the love. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We will be in Romans chapter 8, verse 31 through 39. This is day 17. If this is something that you would like to listen to, please continue. And it reads... What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for all of us. How will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God had chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus, who died more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God. And it's also interceding for us. Amen. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or prosecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Amen. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creations will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So it reads, my brothers and sisters, God works in all things. Amen. Not just isolated incidents for our good. This does not mean that all that happened to us is good. Amen. Evil is prevalent in our failing world. But God is able to turn every circumstances around for our long range good. Amen. Note that God is not working to make us happy but to fulfill his purpose. Know also that this promise is not for everybody. Amen. It can be claimed only by those who love God and are called according to his purpose. Amen. Those who are called are those of the Holy Spirit convinces and enables to receive Christ. Amen. Such people have a new perspective, a new mindset of life. They trust in God, not life's treasures. They look for their security in heaven and not on earth. Amen. They learn to accept, not resent pain and prosecution because God is with them. Amen. God's ultimate goal for us to make us like Christ. Amen. As we become more and more like him, we discover our true selves, the person we are created to be. Amen. How can we be confirmed, brothers and sisters, to Christ's likeness? By reading and heeding the word, by studying his life on earth through the gospel, by being filled with his spirit, and by doing his work in the world. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Brothers and sisters, sometimes we believe these verses mean that before the beginning of the world, God chose certain people to receive his gift of salvation. They point to the verse like Ephesians chapter 1 verse 11 that says we are predestined, predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in comfort with the purpose of his will. Others believe that God foreknew those who would respond to him and upon those he set his mark. What is clear is that God's purpose to people was not afterthought, my brothers and sisters. It was settled before the foundation of the world. People are to serve and honor God. Amen. If you have believed in Christ, you can rejoice in the fact of God has always known you. Amen. God loves is eternal. His wisdom and power are supreme. Glory to God. He will guide and protect you until you one day stand in presence. Amen. God called means summoned or invited. Do you ever think, my brothers and sisters, that because you aren't good enough for God, he would not save you? Do you ever feel as if salvation is for everyone else but you? Then these verses are especially for you, my brothers and sisters. If God gave his son for you, he isn't going to hold back the gift of salvation. His Christ gave his life for you. He isn't going to turn around and condemn you, my brothers and sisters. He will not withhold anything you need to live for him. Amen. The book of Romans is more than a theological explanation of God's redeeming grace. It is a letter of comfort and confidence to address it to you. Paul 
Paul says that Jesus is interceding for us in heaven. God has acquitted us and removed our sins and guilt. So it is Satan, not God, who's accused us when he does. Jesus, the advocate for our defense, stands of God's right hand and to present our case. These words were written to a church that would soon undergo terrible prosecution. In just a few years, Paul's hypothetical situation would turn into painful realities this passage reaffirms god's profound love for his people no matter what happens to us no matter where we are we can never be lost to his love suffering should not drive us away from god but help us to identify with him further and allow his love to reach us and heal us amen these verses contain one of the most comforting promises in all scriptures my brothers and sisters believers have always had to face hardship and many forms whether it's prosecution illness imprisonment or even death these could cause them to fear that they have been abandoned by christ but paul exclaims that it is impossible to be separated from christ amen his death for us is proof of his unquarrable love nothing can stop christ's constant presence with us God tells us how great his love is so that we will feel totally secure in him. Amen. My brothers and sisters, if we believe these overwhelming assurances, we will not be afraid. Amen. Well, now we are in the worksheet area and we are in the prayer box and it says, ask Jesus to help you grasp his unbreakable love for you. In that area, you're going to pray to God, whatever it is that you want to talk to Father God about. Okay. So in the right portion, my brothers and sisters, it reads, imagine looking into Jesus face and he is returning your gaze. What is it like allowing Jesus to see you? Do you feel love, vulnerable, beautiful? What is Jesus expression as he looks into your face? And I will share this with you. I just feel so loved and blessed to know that nothing that has tried to come against me will never prosper, nor will it have any control over my life. Jesus is the way maker and I just love you Father God. You have opened my eyes up to all the enemies that are walking or even trying to interfere with your anointed child. I just want to say thank you Father God for your grace and mercy. Glory hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. I just feel the presence of Christ surrounding my life. Glory hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So now, my brothers and sisters, we are in a connect area, which I call it reflect. And I want you to remember Psalms 106 verse 1. And it says, give thanks to the Lord for he is good for his steadfast love endures forever. So in the connect box, our reflection box, it says, remember a time you felt God's love for you when you missed that mark. So basically, you're going to think of a time that you probably thought that you couldn't make it or you couldn't get through it. And that's what you're going to write about. You're going to be uh, writing about, you know, a time that you just felt that you really needed some help out there and nobody was there for you but somehow you made it through with the grace of god amen so this is going to get ready and conclude our devotion for today peace and blessings to you all and i will see you all in the next one shalom